Well, <laughs> but you know. I have so much cool footage to cut into this. You do. I do. This is, this is great. This isn't real life. It is now. We landed like kind of late in Moscow and we had just enough time to get from the gate that we were landing at to the next gate. Like sprinted there, turns out Narissa's asthmatic and she has like six bags with her. So I was like, give me some of your bags and let's go. My stuff got stuck at the, the screening thing and I was like waiting for them to get my stuff out of the x-ray machine. And we sprinted to the gate, made it just in time, but my bags didn't make it from Moscow to Prague. I thought they were gone. The first night everybody went out and uh, went to beer garden, which is like a thing that they do every night now. I didn't know at the time it was gonna be a thing that was every night, but I felt like I was really missing out on the first beer garden night. And I was just kind of like waiting around and waiting around because my bags were supposed to be delivered at like 11.30. But my bags made it. I got the change. Thank you, John Elston, for letting me borrow a shirt for the entire first day. Prague is, is incredible. And I'm pretty sure a bunch of other people share the same sentiment. I'm worried that the rest of the year is going to be downhill because Prague has set the bar so high. The city is beautiful. It's art everywhere. Literally everything is art. Today we saw a traffic sign that was a sculpture. It's just ridiculous how much art and, and beauty we're surrounded by. It's a safe city. It's a clean city. Uh, they clean the subways at night. I'm pretty sure like Tyler wrote about it in his blog, but they like mop the subways down at night. Everything's within walking distance. There's a convenience store on basically every corner. K10 where we work is a 10 minute walk. Seriously, the co-working space K10 is insane. It was the Danish embassy. It's a big ass mansion. It's got a bunch of rooms in it. It's got this cool lawn out back. It's got a kitchen where there's a chef. The staff there is phenomenal. Yeah, they actually opened up K10 early for us. They weren't supposed to open until July, I believe, like mid-July. I'm just concerned that Prague is gonna be the highlight of the year and it's so early in the year. Maybe I'll be wrong. I definitely see myself having a place here one day. I love it here. I love Prague. Meeting 73 other people all at once is bizarre because you have to try to remember names and conversations and faces. Some of the conversations that I had with people in the first week were enlightening uh, and shockingly familiar. Uh, there's a lot of weird familiarities between everyone that like you wouldn't expect because it's such a new experience, but we all are coming from very similar backgrounds in a way, um, or, we, or we all have very similar goals. So there's a lot of common ground and we've all got goals and aspirations and things that we want to achieve this year. We've been talking about them and that was my favorite part of the first week was those introductions and those conversations, I think. Motherfucking gratitude. <laughs> I, it's gonna be crazy to see the kinds of collaborations that come out of this group because I've talked with a dozen people already about specific projects that we want to put together and I don't see myself having a single second to slow down this year because I've got so many things I want to do and so many people pushing me and inspiring me and it's kind of all this like give and take throughout the group we're all just pushing each other no one really realizes it but we're all like lifting each other. I'm paraphrasing, but the, the quote, you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with is, is totally true. But like in our case, I'm the average of 
74 other people and they're all super impressive interesting people so i think you know even if outside of those those five that i spend the most time with the other people are still at such a high level it's going to be it's going to be really really good for growth and for for myself and and i think we're all pushing each other let me just address the pool party thing first so we get here and we're we're you know, describe the accommodations. We've got uh, 43 people in Belgitska, which is the name of the uh, street that our apartment complex is on. The whole building that I'm in is remotes. And there's, I think, four or five other housing uh, arrangements. And the Knicks, who are sharing an apartment, they're like, yeah, we've got air conditioning, we've got a patio, we've got pools. And we're like, pause. You guys have a pool. When are we having a pool party? They're like, We'll have a pool party this weekend. We were all super excited. So we, we walk out to this apartment complex and we walk up to the door. There's like this raft, this like inflatable dolphin kind of bouncing in the doorway. And we're like, this is the place. We walk inside and <laughs> as we're walking up, I see some ribbons, good sign. I see a keg, good sign. And then two kiddie pools with like half a dozen people sitting in them. I'm like, God damn. I couldn't even be mad because it was like, it was a good try. It was fun. Everybody kind of was drinking and loosened up and we were all just hanging out and dancing and, and getting to know each other still. So thanks, Nix. The honeymoon stage, a term people have been throwing around a lot. I don't really agree or believe in the honeymoon stage. I feel like the experience is what you make it. And if you start to slow down, that's on you. You're, you are slowing down. That's just how you are. Uh, I don't believe that I'll slow down. I do think that certain things will slow down, just like the partying and drinking. We've gone so hard in the first month. Uh, I think I think that we physically cannot keep it up at this rate. I could be wrong, but I don't, I don't think the drinking will continue at this level, at this pace. FOMO. FOMO is fucking real. That shit, that shit sucks. Cause you'll be doing something that's awesome. Like on remote ear, there's always someone somewhere doing something cool at any given moment. We have a Slack channel for literally everything. If I'm out doing something really cool and I happen to look at Slack, I'm missing out on something also really cool. I want to say yes to everything I possibly can within my morals. Um, so yeah, it's been, it's been like for the first month just trying as many new things as possible. I didn't like mushrooms before. And when I say mushrooms, I mean like the vegetable, the fungus. What would you call them? Are they vegetables? I tried vegetable mushrooms. <laughs> I don't hate them anymore. I tried uh, absinthe for the first time. That was fun. That was a crazy day. I almost died that day. Shout out to Rhonda for saving my life. <laughs> so I went to a club. Uh, a couple times actually, I went to a couple clubs. I, if you hung out with me back at home, you'd know that I'm not like a club person. I don't, I'm not a huge nightlife person actually. One of the first nights here, we went to La Sherna, I think it was called, it was, a, it, was, it was a music bar. It was like an 80s, 90s night. And the second I got in there, I like became a different person. I like beelined for the stage where there were like people um, in this big pit and like they climbed out of the pit onto the stage and it was just like dancing like a madman. It was fun, I, I've been just, doing things that I normally wouldn't do back at home. I think part of what's happening and a lot of people are experiencing this is all the inhibitions, all the like limitations that we set for ourselves back at home, not that we set for ourselves, maybe that just kind of fell into place over time are absolved or lifted. When you get here, you're, you're like starting fresh in a way because none of these people know you. No one here knew who I was. I don't have any predefined traits so i get to kind of invent myself again i'm discovering myself basically as everyone else is it's really awesome i'm surrounded by positive ambitious brilliant people this group is phenomenal i could i don't i couldn't have asked for a better group to be traveling the world with for the next 12 months i think um 
boy Greg and Sa Sam is his name, the co-founders. I really hope it's Sam. Anyway, I think what they what they initially intended was to create a community, and that's what they've done for us. Is like this is a community. It's not just a travel agency. It's not like that at all. You're you're part of a community, and being surrounded by seventy four other creative, ambitious, successful, some of them, most of them. I would say we're all successful being out here. We're, we're all successful. Being surrounded by that kind of energy is so motivating. And I thought I was happy. I thought I was motivated back at home. I had no issues or complaints. I was in a good place. And then I got here and it was like, holy shit. Like what, what was I doing? This is how I should be living my life. This is how everyone should be living their lives at some point. I want all my loved ones and my friends and, and family members to experience this. Like, I wish I could take everyone with me just to have the experiences that I've been having in the last month have been crazy. I, I think I referred to Belgitska, my apartment, as home at one point, and then I had to pause and I was like, can I, can I really call it home? But in a way, I'm like redefining the word home. I'm getting so familiar with the people I'm surrounded with. It almost feels like this is home. These guys are becoming my family incredibly fast at a weirdly fast rate. When I was at home, I think I felt stunted. I didn't realize it then, but I was definitely stunted. I wasn't growing anymore. I was kind of just in a groove, doing the same thing. And I was happy, I was content, contento. Things were getting stale. And I just think that life is way too short to get stale. Getting here and, and realizing how much more there is to do and experience and to discuss and to learn. It's like I was uprooted, literally. This clay pot that I was in before is like exploded. And now I have this whole like field that I can spread my roots in. And that feeling, like that, that feeling of being freed, that feels like home. It's hard to explain. It's really, really hard to explain. This is a, a different sense of home in a way. And I love it. I don't know if that makes any sense. It does. Totally. Back to beer garden. Again. What else is new? Who hasn't slept yet? Me. Again. Oh well. Fico showed me probably the most promising wings in Prague. They smell amazing. I am the length of the slide. Yeah. When I take a video, you know. <laughs> 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 this is a. Ch what's happening? What are we doing? So the shots we just ordered unlock the secret menu. Oh. Oh, what's happening? What is it? It's a black light douchebag. Asshole plus novelty equals happy. You're wanker. I love these vanilla. I love that. A fucking cradle. The drink is called a cradle. Oh, it doesn't, it doesn't rock though. Alright, so we all try ours? Wait, we're waiting for hope. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> 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 
shot of absinthe in your mouth? It's absinthe. It's delicious. That's awesome. I feel tingly. Wilson!